Most of us think of pets, we think of animals that are companions that show affection to us and a lot of reptiles don't fit that mold. But what if I told you there are five that definitely do? Today, we're going over the top five most affectionate reptiles you could possibly keep. My name's Adam, this is Diamond. You're watching Wiccan's Wicked Reptiles. Stick around. A special thank you to today's sponsor, Upstart. First of all, I don't know if you can hear it, but there's a tractor in my neighbor's house and it, I've waited all day for it to stop, so sorry about that. Now it just stopped. All right, let's get going. Okay, so let's be honest here. Most reptiles don't really show affection like dogs or cats. I'm not trying to say that. I'm saying that there is a little bit of evidence that reptiles can form bonds to a certain degree, not the degree of a dog or a cat. Let's be very clear. So they'll act differently with one person compared to the next. And this isn't the case with all reptiles, but reptiles definitely do need love. Even if it's not hugging and kissing and things like that, you need to treat these things like they're living beings, not like they're rocks or investments or money signs. Number five, monkey tail skinks. Now I know we already talked about monkey tail skinks last week and we're probably gonna talk about them next week. Should we do a whole video about monkey tail skinks? Let me know in the comment section, hit like or something. Anyway, the reason that I picked monkey tail skinks is because, well, they want to come out a lot of the time. Now, this is the reason that they're number five, because sometimes they actually show the opposite of affection. Some monkey tail skinks don't like to be touched or handled at all. So it depends on if they're socialized or not. I've got three monkey tail skinks. Bruce is the smallest and youngest, and we're still working on him to show affection, to at least be handleable without trying to bite us. So he wouldn't be the right candidate for this, but the other ones, George and Abu, both show affection, especially Abu. If you take this animal out, they're gonna love to be handled by you. They're gonna love you totally. So it's really the characteristic of affection in that they're almost scratching at the glass to come out, which is what I'm trying to, I don't know, I guess characterize in this video. Animals that seem like they wanna be handled, seem like they wanna interact with you and tolerate the interaction very well, where it shows no stress to the animal that you can tell as the human. Now, monkey tail skinks are the biggest skink on the planet. These things are freaking huge in comparison to basically everything else you'd think of as a skink. So be careful of their claws. They are very sharp, they're arboreal, and they're very strong. Strong claws, strong tails, which are prehensile, which is why they're called prehensile Solomon Island skinks or Solomon Island prehensile tail skinks. So they're going to hold on to you as much as you hold on to them. I actually love this. That's why I love arboreal snakes and I love things like bearded dragons, which are semi-arboreal, because they'll hold on to you. You don't have to worry about them falling like a hognose snake. Put a hognose snake on your shoulder and tell me how it goes. All right, all right, we're gonna do a whole video about monkey tail skinks if you want, so we'll move on to the next one. Number, this is two, number, this is three. Number four, Burmese pythons. I love Burmese pythons, you know this. This is the big snake of my choice. Of all the giant snakes out there, I personally like Burmese pythons the most. You're not going on that shoulder, buddy, not a chance. And it's just because they seem more personable in my own experience. This, there's no science to back this up. There's no data. It's just me, my personal experience. It seems like berms almost want to be on you. If I put a berm in the center of a room, it'll kind of explore, but they're generally not afraid. The ones that I have for sure, they're not trying to get away from me. A lot of the times they'll climb up on me, curl around in my lap and sit there. Now, of course, it's probably a warmth thing, but it seems like, and if I have other people in the room, it's like, oh, they, they love you. Well, maybe they don't love me like my dogs love me, but they definitely love the warmth that I provide. And they're not worried about being defensive or uh, trying to get away from me. These animals almost seem like they like the interaction. I'll get on the floor and play with Kratos for an hour and have no issues. He won't try to get away from me. I mean, he might try to get behind things because he's a curious guy, but my puppy does that too. You guys remember Stevie? She looks a little different now, but regardless, I love Burmese pythons. Of all the snakes that there are, this is probably the most personable, the most affectionate, or the one that shows affection or what seems to be affection, even if it's not. Keep in mind, Burmese pythons are big, so I don't recommend these to everybody. They can get over 15 feet sometimes. I mean, more re realistically, 12 to 15 is pretty average. So just do your research first. They are a big snake. You need someone else in the room when you're handling them if you wanna be safe, because they are so big, 
but in my experience, they're not, I don't know, they're just, they're kind of puppy dogs of snakes. Before we move on, I wanna say thanks to Upstart for sponsoring today's video. We've all been there. You find yourself under a mountain of debt, high interest debt, and it feels like you're in a hole you can't possibly get yourself out of. And that's where Upstart comes in. Upstart powered personal loans can help you dig yourself out of this hole. There are personal loans that are built for you. It's all online and it's easy to understand payment terms. And it's not just you. Upstart has helped over 1.8 million people with their path to financial freedom. And there's no judgment if it's for a credit card debt or an unexpected expense or maybe even personal expenses. Upstart can definitely help you and it's a fixed monthly payment with a clear payoff date. So you know exactly what you pay every month and when it's going to end. There's no fine print mumbo jumbo that's going to sink yourself further. And Upstart knows that you're not just a financial credit scorer. This is what bothered me with trying to take out loans in my past is what about you as a person? What about your history of where you work, how long you've worked there, and how much money you take away from that job? What's your income level? These are things that Upstart considers when reviewing your loan application. And this helps you find a smarter rate for your loan. And you can check your rate in minutes for loans between $1,000 and $50,000. And none of this is going to impact your credit score. And there's not a large turnaround time. You can get your funds in as little as one day after your application is accepted. Financial freedom is right around the corner. So don't wait. Go to upstart.com slash wicked reptiles. That's upstart.com slash wicked reptiles and use the URL to let them know that we sent you. Go to upstart.com slash wicked reptiles. Thank you so much. Upstart, let's get back to the video. Number three, Schneider skinks. I've talked about them at nauseum. I don't care. We're going to talk about them again because they're freaking amazing. Schneider skinks are some of the most beautiful snakes. No, they're not. They're skinks. Some of the most beautiful skinks in the entire world. Think um, like a fire skink, but more orangey. These guys are from Africa, so same part of the world. And they're similar size, but they're a little bit smaller. And Schneider skinks are not the same as Berber skinks. There's a whole video right here. I explained the whole thing. But these guys actually try to get out of the enclosure. If I open the enclosure, they will jump on me. They'll climb up to the tallest point, which is my head, which is still not very tall. But anyway, I feel like a tree to them, which is amazing because I don't feel like a tree to anything ever. They act like they genuinely enjoy being out of their enclosure and hanging out with me or whoever it is. If I hand these to somebody, they, even if they're afraid of reptiles, their fear of reptiles goes away basically immediately because they're little goofballs. They're, they're little tiny monkeys that just want to be on you and like kind of wriggle around and they'll, you know, they'll hop from one hand to the next or sometimes when I'm filming, they'll jump right onto the camera lens. So I can't say enough good things about these animals. And in terms of skinks, cause I always thought of skinks as kind of standoffish, but then the more skinks I get, the more I realize skinks are freaking awesome. I almost put blue tongue skinks on the list too, but I realized three skinks is too many. So I think that of all the skinks that you could possibly get, because if you want something a little bit different and you don't want the same thing that Clint has, because <laughs> Clint's reptiles talks about those emerald tree skinks so much and I love them. Like there's a reason why he does that. But I think Schneider skinks are a little bit of a different option and a little bit underrated in comparison. Number two, rock iguanas and rhino iguanas. I think they're both very similar. I had a great opportunity at uh, the Reptarium, Brian Marchuk Zoo in Michigan, handling and talking with, talking to? I guess I was talking to them. They weren't talking back. But anyway, I was feeding them bananas and petting them and rubbing their chinny chin chins. And they seemed like they really almost enjoyed the interaction. They definitely weren't trying to get away from me at all. And some of them were like trying to climb up on my lap. So rock iguanas and rhino iguanas, they're almost puppy dogish, which is why I put them on the most dog-like reptiles list, which is right here, by the way. And I think that they fit that description. Now they're big. These animals are going to get big. You probably need an outside space if you live in a climate warm enough to do that. I would recommend that anyway. And you need a big space indoors if you have winters that are wintry enough for the winter club. I don't know. You know what I'm trying to say here? They need a big space. Think bigger than a tegu in most instances. And they're going to do a little bit of climbing. They're herbivores, which is really awesome. They're beautiful. A lot of guys can almost train them to be come when called, which is not a reptile thing at all. If there's something behind this, like the science, I don't know. But watching Dave Durham do this was pretty darn cool. And this is a video that's like 11 years old. So this is something that you can train your animals to almost act like dogs if you get these. And I say that very loosely, like 
sort of kind of like dogs. Now that I think about it, that dog video, uh, I got roasted by people who just read the title and dog, oh, they can't act like dogs and didn't watch the 30 second intro. So I imagine this is gonna be the same. Let's all just LOL at the people who leave comments like that who didn't watch the video. <laughs> okay, moving on to number one, Bearded Dragons. Now, normally I put Diamond on my shoulder and he doesn't move, uh, but I had a whole bunch of tattoo work done yesterday and it's just tight and that's why I'm dressed like a degenerate. So anyway, I'm not doing that today and his claws are pretty sharp to put on the other side. Honestly, I can watch a movie, I can edit a whole video and he doesn't move. He doesn't bother me. He just chills, he's very cool. Now it's different if I'm outside and the sun's out and he sees bugs flying around, then he might get a little bit, I don't know, fun and hyper, kind of like, I don't know, get the zoomies like a dog. But in terms of affection, if I open the enclosure, he'll hop right out at me. He doesn't see food, he doesn't want food, he'll hop right out and sit on my shoulder and enjoy the warmth, which is a lot of what this affection is, by the way, in my opinion, is they just want the warmth of your body. Reptiles love warmth, they're ectotherms, cold-blooded, they don't produce their own body temperature, however you want to characterize it. So a lot of animals will wanna be on you, but if an animal wants to be on you for heat, they know that you're not a threat. And in my opinion, that shows a little bit of affection. They like you because you are what they like. So no, maybe they don't love you in the way that my dog literally pees when I walk in the house because she's a puppy. She just gets so excited because she genuinely has affection. I don't really see that with bearded dragons or any reptile. So take this affection thing that this whole video is about with a grain of salt. But for sure, if there's one on the list, that tops a list, it's bearded dragons. There's a reason I do almost every video with diamond. And there you go. Those are your top five most affectionate reptiles. What do you think? Was this a silly list? Was this a good one? Should I do a part two? Was there other reptiles that should have been on the list? Let me know in the comment section below and put a video idea for next week. I take all the videos out of the comment section of the video ideas rather. And as always, a special thank you to the Patreon supporters. You guys are freaking amazing. You got this video early, you get extra videos, you get discounts on the merch, you get all sorts of different stuff, including vlogs coming soon. Anyway, for as little as a dollar a month, you can be part of that too. And that's it. Because I do videos twice a week, that means that I'll see you in the next one.